So what's going on, ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall right now is actually going out to promote the movie. But there was a clip where they said something interesting about the first movie itself. And I say, you know what? That is interesting. And we definitely want to focus in on that because this is something they do in Hollywood all the time. And a lot of times we don't know of these, you know, incidents that happen. So the original coming to America, it came out in 1988. Now it was Paramount Pictures have forced them to cast a white man. Okay. Cause they, they, this is what they said at the time. You're going to hear a clip, right? So I want you to hear this clip and then we're going to go into this and talk about this a little bit because I thought this was very interesting. And a lot of our actors in the community, you know, have to do certain things, but just to get their movies on. But let's go ahead and roll this short clip. Oh, yeah, this is <laughs> uh, how did Louie come to be a part of, of that film and your world there? I uh, love Louie, but I think we were forced to put Louie in it. What? No, I, we I think we were forced to... to put a white person. Yeah, Paramount was like, with the, because the whole cast is black, and this was back in the, you know, the 80s. So it was like, we have to have a white person. We can't do, it has to be a white person in the movie. Like, what? <laughs> and uh, so it was, uh, who's the funniest white guy around, right? And then um, and Louie, we knew him, was cool with him. And so he, that's how Louie got in the movie. <laughs> wow. Louis the funniest white person you know. That's a pretty great distinction to have. Well, back then, back then, it was 1988. It was all, you know, I, it was like, uh, Louis was really funny. And it was like, we gotta have a white guy. Okay, Louis would be perfect. Louis still pretty and funny. Louis was and in fact, hey, Jim, yes, Louis it was yeah, really, a, it was official. I, I had a list. They gave me a list with three white guys. And they said, who would you rather work with? <laughs> really? <I> to Louis. <laughs> Do you remember the other two? Oh, yeah, but I can't say. He gets it, all right. Now, isn't that interesting, brothers and sisters, that they told him you have to put a white guy in a black movie. You just have to do it, okay? Now, this movie, you know, didn't really focus on anything in the um, white community, you know, so that's if it was. But there are films that feature no black people in Hollywood, we don't care about it. I mean, it is what it is, right? I mean, there's some movies out there that feature nothing but Asian people or Indian people, whatever. But it's interesting. They said they f were forced to do this. Now, you remember we talk about in white supremacy, the benefits of it is unearned benefits. Now, I'm not saying that at the time period, you know, in, in back in 1988, I remember Louis Anderson and he had shows and all of that, but they literally told him them, look, you got to pick out these three white dudes and they was, you got somebody white got to be in here. You, you cannot uh, have this movie, this black movie without no white folks in it. And that is actually a lot of the mentality, even with a lot of black people too. It's like a lot of black folks are so programmed that if something is just too black, and it does have no white folk in it. They feel kind of strange about this. Yeah, I don't know about that because there's a, they, they have people that's just literally programmed to that and you and see the system programs you for that because in the media, you understand Hollywood is part of the media. And we talked about this before that media is warfare. It is media is going to be the warfare that going to, to shape your perception It's the warfare that's going to get you to look at people in a good light on a bad light. You understand? And see, the media is very, very important. See your worldview, how you think about different people groups that you never lived around people that you never met, but you have a certain thought process about people based off of what the media has shown you. For example, the reason why a lot of people in our country, black, definitely black Americans, the main reason why they had, and I remember growing up, and I talk about this, I remember late at night, 
they always have this white woman named Sally Struthers. Those of you in my age group, you know who Sally Struthers is. Sally Struthers will come on with these feed the children ads. Okay. And they say, Oh, look, we in Ethiopia and look at these poor children. And they will show these, these African children with these flies around them and all the ribs. And you're like, Oh my God. And these kids will have tears coming out of their eyes. And I mean, boy, you would feel bad. I'm like Sally Struthers, you know, look, look like she, this call it what it is compared to those children. I mean, Sally Struthers look like she can take a break at that time period uh, with, with, with eating for definitely a, a few months. And you going around these children and you filming, oh, we're well, just, you know, a, a, a 10 cents a day. You know, you can help feed a child. And when you see that as a child, I'm talking about as a black American person, listen, we got our issues and problems, but man, look, 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 um, Jamal, he, he may not have much, but he ain't got his ribs showing out here like that. You know what I'm saying? Or yeah, we may be living in the hood and all that, but we ain't got that problem. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying. So it starts shaping your mind to think, like, hell no, nah, I don't want to go no dog on Africa for what? You know what I'm saying? Those images in your mind are all those National Geographic, you know, uh, shows they would show out of rural African areas. And, you know, when a lot of African immigrants would talk about the term African booty scratcher and they will really be hurt. And from what I'm seeing, they are, they really were hurt by that term, African booty scratcher. Now I told them, many of them, I was called African booty scratcher too. Many times I was called African booty scratcher. That was a diss at one point in time. The reason why that came about on those national geographic, you would have those people that's in the tribes and they're wearing those, those little um, get ups and mosquitoes or whoever else would bite them. You know, and and like anybody else would get bit, you know, a mosquito bites you anywhere you're going to itch. So, you know, they say an African booty scratcher, you know what I'm saying? But where did those images come from? Those images came from National Geographic, not a black owned company. You know what I'm saying? At the same time, while they showing you uh, poor kids in Ethiopia and showing you people in the rural areas, them same white folks are laid up on the beach in the continent of Africa, enjoying themselves. While you saying, I don't want to be over there. Hell no. America is just where it's at. Uh, my ancestors built this place. It's the best place ever. Yeah, it got racism, but it's better than that. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I seen it with my own two eyes. That's why I'm telling you. See, I'm not a brother that didn't, didn't go and see it. I seen the white Europeans go over to the continent, going to those beautiful beaches, and and enjoying themselves while while black Americans really thinking, you know, asking a thousand questions. Well, you know, what about this? And is it safe? I'm like, do you see how we live? Every day we live under the threat of a race soldier killing us. And questions like, are we going to be safe? Constantly be asked. Like we're safe in this country. We're not safe in this country. But where all that come from? That come from media propaganda and see they all in on it they, they telling you to stay away while they enjoying it while they going to buy up the land and do everything else it comes from media propaganda this is why we have to be involved and it's very very important now louis anderson being added to this movie you know i wouldn't want to be added to no movie and and be told like Man, we had to bring you in here. We, I mean, you know what I'm saying? You know, like now this is coming out. If I was Louis Anderson, I'm like, man, well, let's say if he didn't even know. Let's say if he didn't know, they didn't say nothing. Well, let's say, Louis Anderson now, I mean, like, dog, oh, man, they just gave me this job because they got to have a white guy in it. Like, seriously, I just didn't get the job because, hey, they, 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 you know, the company wanted me in it. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't like that situation whatsoever. But continuing, you know, now, they're saying that in the eighties, you have to understand this was before the streaming platform. This was before the time of everybody having the internet. You know what I'm saying? Hollywood and the machine controlled everything. If you didn't go through the studios, you wasn't getting nothing done. If you didn't go through, um, 
the music industry, you wasn't getting a, nothing done whatsoever, right? So the thing is, now Louis Anderson today, he's 66 years old. Um, and I'm just curious to, you know, what his response is going to be um, with the situation. Now, uh, he recently had made a comment. He said, you know what I really had fun doing on Tuesday? Shooting Coming to America 2, Anderson said in August of 2019. Um, they say he asked who's playing. He said, I can't say, though it certainly seems like that he's reprising his role as Maurice, who worked at McDonald's Fast Food. So they put him back. They talk about putting him back into the movie, which I don't take no issue with him you know, being in the movie, I take more issue of them forcing, you know, them to put them in the movie. What, what, if, what if, you know what I'm saying? They could have wanted them in the movie for some reason. Now, let's say that, right. Or maybe they, they, they could have asked, Hey, we got a, this character. Do you know somebody? It's just kind of, it's crazy. Y'all it, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. But this movie is coming out on Amazon um, here actually in the uh, few days, those of you who have, Amazon prime. Um, you can check that out, but the, these things behind the scenes, you know, in the Hollywood and music industry, you know, it's been going on for years, strong arm. And I know I was listening to Dave Chappelle recently, and he was saying that because of the people, the people supporting him, he said, he don't know what, you know, penis tastes like. He said, cause some of his colleagues, actually had to taste one. That's, that's what he, he said to say, but you know, Dave Chappelle, you know, he talked about also in Hollywood that, you know, some of these guys have to put on a dress and he said that he wasn't putting on no dress. You know, Dave Chappelle walked away from comedy central, went to um, South Africa. What about five years? He came back. He still was taking some time off and he, he came back on fire and he got back higher than what he was before. But one thing I can respect about, you know, Dave Chappelle is that Dave Chappelle was his own man. You weren't going to sit up there and, you know, make, make him, uh, uh, bow down or, you know, you have like a big old dude like Terry Crews. Remember that story? Terry Crews was saying some, you know, um, Hollywood exec went up there and just grabbed him in his stuff in front of his wife. Look, when I heard that story, and, 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 and I said, listen, man, I would have told my wife, look, you got the bill money. I'm knocking this fool out. You hear me? Because I have a right to knock you out because, because, because it's self-defense. You were trying to rape me or something and I'm just defending myself. That's it. But, but you know, when you scared for your job and scared for these people going to blackball you and all of that. Um, you let somebody fill up on you. I think that uh, for me and Terry Crews don't even realize it. The day that he did not knock dude out is the day that his wife lost respect for him. See men don't understand. There are times that you're going to have to go it on and, and handle business because if you give your wife an impression that you didn't stand up as a man, she'll never forget that. You know what I'm saying? Even though she's the one told him, don't do anything. And you remember the story you say he got in the car and he just started wanting to tear the wheel off and all of that. And look, <laughs> and then, you know, ever since he told that story, you know, Terry Crews have been just, you know, bucking his, he'd been, you know, seeing he bucking his eyes and, and all of that, you know, Hollywood, like I say, it's, it's a dirty, dirty place for black people. That's why I love the internet. Like y'all don't know. I love the internet so much because it gives us an opportunity now we all having to move to, you know, different platforms. I was speaking to, um, uh, one of, one of my great, you know, great, you know, uh, black content creators. Um, and we were discussing this, you know, about the time now is we all gonna have to start moving around to different platforms because even platforms like YouTube is getting so restrictive that you can't be creative. You know, when you can't say certain, I mean, normal words or when you can't, for instance, you know, I used to talk a lot about police brutality in certain videos. And now the issue with, with content creators is that, you know, you take your time to make, you know, content. Um, you have to get, you know, at least us, we have, you know, two editors. So we have editors we have to pay. 
then we have a graphic designer we have to pay. You know, then we have our team, we have the rest of the people that we have to pay that's behind the scenes. And when things are being demonetized, you literally, you know, lost, you know, an ability to pay, you know, the people and everyone we pay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is people within the community. Okay. We have definitely paid a good amount of money last year um, to people within the community. And I'm very proud of the figure that we paid to people in the community. But with community support and listen, you know, what what we're doing, we're not going to sit up here and just cower down and not um, censor ourselves. This is why we have AfricanDiasporaNews.org. And, you know, I was waiting for our app to be done and I want to make the big push there because I'm at a point that, you know, all my police videos going to go, you know, on my website now because of this censorship that's going on, you know, or, and I say censorship comes in multiple ways. Censorship could be taking your content down or censorship could be demonetizing content as well. And it's no, di- it's no different than, than Hollywood or whatever. Cause a lot of the, the big tech companies are, you know, it's their platform. I mean, so we can go so far, we could say, Oh, well, it's wrong. We could listen, we can care. It's not, it's their stuff. So what we have to do is do like Dave Chappelle, and even what Eddie Murphy and them is doing now is do things on our own. We can make deals, but do things on our own as a people, because what we have to do, even, you know, podcasting is great. Podcasting is actually going more and more of the future. And that's one thing I said that I wanted to make sure that I continue to do. If anything is podcasting, um, podcasting is, is definitely, you like I said, you know, I started off that way, basically, you know, with blog talk radio, you remember with me and Miss Gabriella, um, would be doing the blog talk radio shows for two or three hours. And, you know, shout out to Miss Gabriella. Um, I talked to her, you know, not too long ago. And everything's going back to that now, just with better sound and better ability. So I would just tell people, we as a community, make sure that you're cre- when you're creating, create your own lane too. And have multiple platforms. So create your own, you know, dot com or dot org or whatever you have for your content. Okay, create that because you always want to have a lane where you can do your content. You can speak because what we have to do as a people, we don't need to be going through Hollywood. We don't need to go through the music industry because you can see what they do. They'll force you to put somebody on your movie that you didn't even act. You're like, I I don't want this on this dude in the movie. Okay, the dude was in the movie. Yeah, he's in it now, but they said it was cool with him. Let's say if they wasn't cool with him, didn't even know this dude, that would have been even worse. You understand what I'm saying? So I, I feel this much. If anything you can learn from that story and what I really learned from it, we got to be truly independent because I said this. A lot of times we, we talk about, you know, I don't like the term pro-black because in the I would say your actions need to be quote-unquote pro-black, not your words. But if you are, you know, for your community, then you got to create spaces where your community can go and talk with you. And not everybody in the community needs to talk with you either. I'm a firm believer of now, definitely at this stage of the game, I'm only looking for people that's on my mindset, on my wavelength. And not all of you are. And that's fine. That is fine that not all of you are, are on the same, you know, page with me. I get it. I'm not offended by it. I'm good with it. That used to bother me, but it doesn't bother me anymore. It doesn't bother me. So what what we're saying here is this. Learn from this story with Eddie Murphy, you know, coming to America and seek to always seek to create our own. You know what I'm saying? And and, and when when we talk about creating our own, y'all have to support. You got to support the people that's giving you the messages. Let me tell you something. You know, if you guys don't support, it goes away. And unfortunately, and I know this from experience, you got to literally, it has to go away for those, for those people that's going to support you to actually start supporting you, you know, financially, you understand? Like our website is nine 99 per month. Okay. Um, our overall goal, um, is to get a certain amount of members and, and, and that way we could, cause we not censored over there and even podcasting podcasting is also a lot better as well. You know, you're not as censored as much, um, with podcasting either, but you know, our ultimate place is the website. 
Okay. So we're going to definitely push more and more of that. So I'm going to let people know, um, probably even on the, on the main, you know, um, our main platform, at least on YouTube that, Hey, any police videos from now on going on the website. So you asked me to comment because I'm tired of censoring videos. I'm tired of edit, you know, making sure don't show this, don't show that. And then even if you show a, a, a picture, you're still getting demonetized. So might as well say forget it. Now, some people say, well, you shouldn't let them censor you. Listen, at the end of the day, we got people to pay. That's the bottom line. And enough people don't support us monthly to justify that. Right. So until we get that, you know, that must support. We can care less about the monetized content. We just going to put it on the, on the place where we know that people are, is actually supporting. Right. Um, but I'm a firm believer. We got to do it all on our own, ladies and gentlemen. We got to do it all on our own because when we get mad and we say, oh, well, these folks censoring, you know, uh, you know, black content creators, you know, when we talk about the truth. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, we talking about the truth on their platform and you, we already know how they feel about certain things. So yes, we're going to have to start creating our own lane to doing it ourselves. Um, so, so we don't, we're not told eventually where well, you got to bring this person in. See, nobody tells me who to bring in to this company. We're not going to have nobody telling me that, you know what I'm saying? No, uh, uh-uh, because like my grandfather always said, if, if, if what's the point of having things when you, you know, having things, if you can't run it, whether it's your house, whether it's anything else, see Eddie Murphy at that time, because he depended on Paramount, they told him that now today with Amazon, he wouldn't have that to worry about because that was just a, uh, Hey, we filmed, you know, Amazon filming this, you know, with you is a partnership. They're not going to tell you anything you know, too much because you bring in all that money to Amazon, <laughs> you know, and Amazon is just like Netflix, you know, and all of that. They, they trying to, you know, be the place that people go and definitely, you know, with the situation with COVID and all of that. So what are we going to say to you, ladies and gentlemen, definitely thank you for, you know, listening to our podcast. Those of you who are new, this uh, came by and listened to our podcast. Uh, thank you for that. And shout out to all the um, truck drivers. I want to give you all a shout out. Uh, those of you definitely, you know, enjoy the podcast, you let me know and everything that you like the longer content. So shout out to you, you know, out there um, bringing the freight and everything that we need all over the country. I definitely appreciate you, especially when we had this pandemic and we needed food on the shelves and, you know, we needed our, you know, medical supplies and all that. Truck drivers had to get on the road in the pandemic, you know, to make sure that we had all that. So shout out to all the truck drivers we you know, definitely brothers in the community, sisters in the community is doing that. We greatly appreciate you. Uh, thank you for listening. See you next time. Uh-oh.